Today I'm checking out this lithium iron phosphate battery that was sent to me from Dr. Prepare. They sent this at no cost so I could do this review. So I'm going to go ahead and test this thing out. I'm going to get it charged up first and we're going to see everything that it comes with and then we're going to do a capacity test on it. Now this is a 12.8 volt 100 amp hour battery. This is the real number here, 1280 watt hours. It does have a max discharge of 100 amps that's continuous and a max continuous charging current of 50 amps. That's pretty standard for a battery this size. But this one is a little different. I mean, this one has some little features that you'll see on some batteries. It's got a little battery meter here to just kind of tell you, you know, what percent. It says 75% right now. But this one has this whole control panel. And what's cool about it is, is this really isn't any bigger than your standard size battery of this format. So for them to just kind of lower this a little bit and put this control panel capability here makes it just that much more usable. So getting into that, it comes with the battery, the manual that's going to go over all of this for you. It comes with some screws and two metal mounting plates. And if you read this, what this is for is on the bottom of this battery. I don't know how easy it is to see it in the camera, but you've got these little mounting spots here. You mount these plates under here, which then gives it a little bit of space sticking out to the side. That way you can mount it down to something instead of just having your little standard strap or whatever it is you would do to put this securely in your RV or your vehicle. This actually has these plates that will just hard mount it down and make it very stable wherever you're going to mount it. So that's cool. I like that little extra thought they put into that. And it comes with all the hardware and everything you need to do that. Then it comes with this 12 volt uh, accessory plug with an Anderson style connector. And it comes with this, you know, control panel. I mean, it's what I call it, but basically it's a, a power station section you have where you can push solar in using an Anderson style connector. So if you uh, have MC4 and you need to convert to Anderson for this, but that's a pretty simple connector to find. Then this has USB out. So these are just for power out, USB-A, USB-C. This one says USB-C in and out. So basically you can charge it or power off of it with this USB-C. And then this is DC 12 volt out, which is another Anderson style connector, which you can plug this right into that. And so now you would have your 12 volt accessory plug sticking out this. So this is pretty cool. This just gives you the capability that if you're just out and about and you need to be able to charge this on a solar panel or maybe through, um, you know, like a USB port, something like that. Plus it gives you just, you know, more of a feature than just having a positive and negative terminal to be able to power things. To do this though, as you notice here, it's got an Anderson style connection on bottom. You just flip this thing forward here. There's a little plug here and then there's an Anderson style connector right here on top of the battery. And then this just plugs right into the top of that. I believe I have to, there's also a little cover here for a connector here. I'll read more about that when I'm charging this, but I'm going to put that back in. You flip this this way to go inside of there. There it goes. So you just push that in that plug again on the bottom. It just kind of folds into that little spot that they have dedicated for it there. And now you have all of these ports. You can press the power button here and it shows you there's a little light for the power button on and off. And so the other power button probably does something like tell you it's charging or that you're pulling power from it. But again, I got to read all the information in the manual about this. What I'm going to do now is get this thing charged up so we can get it fully topped off and do a capacity test. All right. So I've got this battery fully charged and topped off. It has, Come to a resting voltage right now of 13.8 it's very normal i've got an inverter hooked up to this a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter and these are the clamps for this battery monitor that's monitoring this from a shunt that's back there in the back with the inverter now to put a load on this i am going to turn the inverter on and i have a power adapter that's going to be pulling right about 200 watts of power which combined with the inverter should be about 200 to 215 watts, something like that. And I'm going to let that run and just 
drain all the power out of this battery to see if we get the full rated amount of power that this battery says it's storing. So just your basic capacity test, just to make sure that this battery has all of the storage that it says it has capable. And I'm gonna start that test now. So let me get the inverter turned on. All right, so now that the inverter has calmed down with its uh, self-test, you'll see that we're right around, what, 216, 217 watts it's pulling. The power supply that I have connected to this pulls usually right at 200 watts. So that 16 extra watts is just the overhead from the inverter. But either way, it doesn't really matter because we are really doing this just to see what this battery is going to provide us. So I'm going to let this run. It's going to take a few hours at least to get this drained down. But when the inverter starts chirping, that means it's got low power coming in, low voltage, and we should be getting to the bottom of the battery. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out, let this run for a while, and we'll come back when the battery's low. All right, so back, the inverter was beeping. I turned the inverter off just to not hear the beeping anymore, but this is where we're at. It did 1.28 kilowatt hours, so that's 1,280 plus watt hours, which is what the battery is rated at, so that's good. 100 amp hours, it is resting right now at 10.9 volts. This got down to, I think, 10.7 when I turned it off and the inverter was reading like 10.3 to 10.4. So we were really at the bottom. That This is basically it. I might have gotten maybe one more amp hour out of this, maybe. But this is the bottom of the battery. It definitely met specs. Good battery from what I could see so far. I love the fact that it comes with this little extra control panel piece here that allows you to charge from solar and plug in USB devices and have a DC port out. I mean, it's just a great little extra that makes this battery, you know, stand apart from the other ones like this. I like the case on it too. I know that's kind of weird to like on a battery, but I like, I like the format of it. I like the fact that it looks like they screwed this case together and not just a bunch of glue. I do plan on taking this battery apart, checking out the inside BMS, what kind of cells, what does it look like on the inside, how well is it wired in here, how well are the cells put together. So if you like these kind of videos about taking these things apart and seeing what's inside, please subscribe to the channel. That really helps me out and you'll get notified when I have that new video out there. So I'm gonna be doing that pretty soon. But when it comes to capacity, it did meet the capacity test. So if this battery was within my budget and it was competitively priced with other batteries of its you know, size and nature, then I would definitely think about this battery. It's you know, a really nice battery. Like I said, I like the, the format of it. Even building a solar battery bank out of this would not be a problem. But this is again kind of tailored to you know a standalone battery that has extra features watch for the next video about taking this thing apart and i hope this information was helpful thank you very much for watching y'all take care